Alrighty guys, today I'm gonna to show you how I make my uh, black powder. And I have to say this right off the bat, that obviously don't be an idiot when you're doing this stuff. I am I do it very safely and I am here in our little corner in our yard, away from everything. So that's what I would recommend as well, near a fire pit or somewhere that's not flammable or you know, any just obvious stuff. Just don't be an idiot when you're doing this. I also hold no responsibility of anything that may happen while trying this. So with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I make mine. So you're going to be able to see my shadow on this one. I apologize for that, but that's just what I'm dealing with right now. So what you're going to need is you're going to need three, at least three chemicals and maybe four, depending on what you're wanting to do. If you're just wanting make wanting to make black powder with like no, no stars or you're not going to granulate it, you may or may not need dextrin. Uh, you can make granulated BP or stars without it, but I just use it. So I'm going to be using dextrin. So that is one of the four chemicals that I'm using. I'm using potassium nitrate. This is a pretty common thing that people use, the stump remover, spectricide, stump remover. And if you look online, the ingredients of this is 99.9% KNO3. So. You can get this at Menards or Amazon, used to have it, I don't know if they still do. Um, any hardware store pretty much, or gardening center. Uh, sulfur, you can get this pretty much anywhere. I got this off of Amazon. And then uh, charcoal. And it depends what you wanna do with the black powder, uh, what ch charcoal you need to get, but just for multi-purpose, the best thing is just to go to skylighter.com uh, and you can pretty much get anything pyro-related pyro -related that you could ever imagine. So just go ahead and go on there. Um, and I believe it's Ned Gorski that is the owner of this website. I could be wrong, but I know that he is at least associated with them somehow. So this is just charcoal air float, um, just very fine charcoal. So the finer the better pretty much. And then also no hardwoods. You want soft woods and the finer the better. So those are the chemicals that I'm using. Uh, for the potassium nitrate, it comes pretty... Um, it comes in like crystal form, so it's not very powdery, but you want it to get to the point of like powdered sugar. And to do that, um, it just depends on what you have. You could use a mortar and pestle, but that would take absolutely forever. So I go ahead and use a blender um, and just go ahead and blend the contents that I need and I have it in here. So it's pretty much just powdered sugar at this point. It doesn't taste like it though. Um, so just if you're gonna do that, make sure not to mix any chemicals. Uh, thoroughly wash the container before you mix anything else so you don't have any combustion that you don't want. I got a scale and then my mill, which I do mill my uh, BP, so I use marbles and just a standard, um, I don't know what this one is even called, the Chicago Electric. You can get this at Harbor Freight or pretty much anywhere that you could, that you would think would have this. So yeah, those are the three chemicals and I also just have, I use right now coffee filters, uh, you can use solo cups, it doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, just as a way of uh, containing things before you mix them. So that is what I'm using today. Um, and so I'm using the typical, sorry about the wind, I'm using the typical um, 75, 15, 10 formula. 75% potassium nitrate, 15% um, charcoal, and 10% sulfur. And so for this, um, to fill up a container this size, it's Skylighter is actually where I get the information on, on uh, ratios and that kind of thing. To fill this, I'm going to use 94 grams of uh, potassium nitrate. 12.5 grams of sulfur and 19 grams of charcoal. And then I'm gonna use an added about one and a half grams of dextrin as a binder. Like I said, that's not necessary. It's completely optional. Um, and this stuff is very compacted in here, which makes me nervous. So it makes me wonder if it got a little damp. So I'm just weighing out my potassium nitrate right now. 
like I said, it's going to be 94 grams of this stuff. A little much. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not. But I've got about 94 and a half grams, which will be just fine. I try to be as exact as possible, but a half of a gram really isn't going to make much of a difference, especially if I'm just making um, stars or something. So with that, I'm going to just go ahead and set that aside. And next, I'm going to do uh, sulfur. So I need 12 and a half grams of this. Kind of difficult to work with this right now because it's so windy. Bear with me here. Um, I'm pretty sure before I upload this video, I will upload the test of... Okay, so I've got 12 and a half grams, um, about, give or take, a tenth or so. And like I said, it doesn't matter too much. I believe I was saying something before I got interrupted, but, um, yeah, so you guys should see a demo of the shell that I made with my granulated... Uh, black powder that, that should have been uploaded before this um, so now with charcoal it's extremely fine so I would recommend wearing like a mask or something just pulling up your uh, shirt over your mouth so you don't breathe it I don't think it'll really harm you but it just messes up your um, it gives you allergies if you have them So I need 19 grams of this stuff, and this is the uh, most difficult um, chemical to work with out of this all of this stuff because it's so extremely fine that it just floats. It's called, I mean, it's called air float for a reason. So it's just super difficult to work with, and because of that, it's super super light. So it's just really difficult to measure sometimes, but um, so I got three out of four ingredients, and like I said, I'm gonna believe I'm gonna use this for either stars or granulation. So I am going to add some dextrin, just about a gram, so not much at all. And this is homemade dextrin, so it smells a lot like well, what it is is baked cornstarch so nope yeah that'll happen with this kind of stuff okay so that was very messy but that's about a gram and a half and that's yeah, 1.4 but that's perfectly okay so those are the ingredients all mixed up that I'm going to be using. And notice, like, I keep them as separate as possible. Uh, just as a safety precaution so you don't have any uh, spontaneous combustion or things setting on fire that you don't want to. So, <clears throat> once you get all those weighed out, you're going to want to go ahead and put them into the mill. And I'm going to go ahead and get situated and show you guys how I do that. Okay, so with this jar, I just have a set amount of marbles. I'm not sure exactly how much it is. I could count, but I'm not going to right now. Uh, but the rule of thumb is you want about half of the mixing container filled with your mixing agent. Um, or not necessarily agent, but material. And for my sake, that is marbles. So you want about half. That's a little bit more than half, but that's, a, that's you know, I'm gonna take a few out. And so that's about what you want, about half. And then you want about a quarter of the container filled with your ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with 
Dexter in, just throw that in there. Obviously, it doesn't matter what order you do this. Just got to make sure it all gets in there. Lost a bit of sulfur. So I because I lost a little bit of sulfur there, I'm going to add a little bit more. I wasn't quite gentle enough. So I'm just going to add a literal pinch. And I really don't think that that really made much of a difference, but I like to keep it as controlled as possible. So once you got all that um, in there, you want to close the container. Make sure it's sealed. And then just like that, your uh, mixing container is ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the mill and then I think I'm going to let this one go for about four hours. I don't think I've ever gone above three, um, but that's just because I haven't been patient enough. But I'm going to go ahead and let that go for about four hours and I'll get back to you guys once it's done. So it has been nearly three and a half hours and I already went ahead and took it off the mill and got my little station set up which I usually do. So I just have a little strainer um, or something of the sort so I can put the marbles in there and sift out all the powder. So this is what it looks like after it's done. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut and get back to you guys once I have it all separated and into my little jar. You can use pretty much anything, glass is preferable, or plastic. So, yep, I'll get back to you guys once I get it. So this batch usually makes about 125 grams, give or take a little bit, I'm not sure exactly how much. So it may look like quite a lot, but it's really not as much as you think it would. And now that I'm looking at it, it's very, it's a lot darker on camera than it is um, compared to in person. And change, it changes the, the white balance when I put my hand in there so you can see a little bit. Okay, so I got it all in the jar and this is what it looks like. It's really not as much as you think it would be, um, but that's what it's looking like. And I will show you guys a burn test quickly. I got a little trail and a little pile here. So I'm going to move this aside and go ahead and show you the little uh, trail. Okay, that one didn't burn as well because I think it was a little thin, but here's the big pile. Quite a lot of smoke, so not at all smokeless, but yeah, there's hardly any residue, so uh, that'll let you know that that was pretty mixed well, like that's, that's not much at all, so. Yeah, that's how I make my black powder, so go ahead and leave a like if you liked it, and like I said, I will have uploaded the demo of that shell and I will link it in the description.